So I knew that there, had, there hadn't been any shows of ambition on the post of four years in Britain for a long time, if at all. And I had a strong sense that we could make an exhibition that presented it afresh, showing that art created in Britain after the war was vital, exciting, formally adventurous, and on board, moving and utterly distinctive. This is an exhibition that highlights multiple modernisms, each one as valid and telling as the other. Previously, I believe there's been a fixation when looking at this period on the tired debate of abstraction versus figuration. And that for me is entirely beside the point. Um, so maybe, maybe Britain wasn't a cultural backwater after all. I uh, started this project thinking that hopefully we can show that. In the early 1960s, Susan Sontag called for a, an erotics of art, stressing the importance of feeling over interpretation. And I think most all modern artists require that response from us. The work speak through the body and of the body. Uh, I think more than anything, it is what the artists would have wanted us to do, to really feel this work, to really spend time with it. And if my curation has succeeded in staging it in such a way as to enable that, I am a woman, I am a curator. So the exhibition starts with the artists and the work, and the belief and the hope that it will be revelatory. Francis Bacon thought that art should deepen the mystery, Frank Auerbach said that it was his form of action. Francis Newton Sousa made art in order to exist. He put eyes in his brow in order to see better with his brain. As Stuart Hall said, among the first wave of migrant artists to come here, they wanted to look Britain in the eye and conquer it. All of this is relevant when you look at the work in the exhibition and know, knowing how to respond.